So, I'm here for like a bunch of reasons, but I really want to point out. Um, I, for some reason, kept thinking that this song belongs to Rain World. It's just a, it's just a weird detail I want to bring up while I'm doing this. Again, just to make sure that my Chapter 2 save is fine. You, you'll see what I mean in a moment. Don't worry about it. We're getting to Chapter 2 in a moment. I kind of like how, in order to get the better upgraded versions of your, uh, your acts, like the better dodge, the better heal and everything, you have to do the nice guy things. You have to act if you want to fight better. So while we're here, I've heard some interesting theories. One of which is that Chris's uh, dialogue options are always closest to the option that he himself would pick, which is interesting. Um, so the heart is always like closer to what Chris himself would want. But the other one I've heard is apparently Chris, people comment on Chris being sickly when he's around on the overworld talking to too many people in the light world. And the implication being that Chris is antisocial or introverted to some extent, and he's getting really sick and tired of the soul forcing him to talk to everyone to have a fun conversation. I'm interesting, Chris rarely does something on his own, but that is a moment where Chris does something without us giving us, without us doing anything. It's kind of interesting. Also, I think there's like an enemy in this horde of dudes that you don't ever actually see. Let's take a look. I like how Susie can shoot axe magic. Fucking axe magic, man. That'll get you. I still love that it has that stupid pass thing. I really should just do Undertale, man. Like, not... It was like a dude at the bottom. Nice. Oh, dad. Yeah, I should really just finish Undertale, really. Oh, and I looked it up. Um, if you hurt or kill or get rid of anyone by damage, like they flee from combat, uh, the ending is that Ralsei uses Pacify on him, and everyone is like, you have to leave! Yeah, stick around, buddy. Just here to say hello. But yeah, I think that's kind of... It's just... There's something about this that just felt so dumb. I, in general, don't know where this is going to go. Like, what's the plot going to be? Because, don't forget... That th this is... Like, what even is the arc we're going with? Like, oh, well, there's a bunch of holes opening in the ground, and Susie is growing as a person. Also, I think from this point forward, Susie has, like, her eyes visible, which is a weird detail that I didn't think about too hard. I was like, it's kind of easy to super easily go through every conversation. It can even hold the, the skipping button. It just goes, wow! Man, that's a long conversation. Is my throat ready? It's not. It's not. I'm, I'm already dying. Oh, I'm already dying. Also, I missed a conversation with Toriel, which is kind of the main reason I'm really doing this. I, I, I didn't think she'd have, like, more conversations and things to say. Man... Clover, why are you such a weird enemy? Like, everyone else has this distinctive style, and the Clover's just like, nah, I'm just here. Chapter 2, like, in general, I, I wonder if the point is uh, twists and turns, and like, man, why are you doing it like that? Why are you doing it like that? So, if you don't... I, I think Rossi probably just catches up with you, and just like, oh... Here's my hat. Here's me without my hat because otherwise the second chapter doesn't make sense because he doesn't wear his hat then. Maybe just I like how the horns are not part of the hat. They're just the, his horns poking through the hat. Detail that people probably notice. I didn't notice it before. What was I talking about? Chapter two. Point chapter. If so much changes. Maybe it's about oh I'm I I Toby Fox am learning how to make this video game and it's changing over time. Maybe it's all about the twists and turns. Like oh you'll never know what's gonna happen next. And it's all about that. Like do you have control if you don't decide those factors? And uh, Lots of things to think about. Anyway, my soul starts glowing because it's full of hot garbage. I too any. His name was Burger Pants. His name was Burger Pants. That's the name. Also, I looked up a bunch of Undertale boss fights because why was I there again? Was I there for Toriel? Yeah, I was. I was looking up like Toriel because I think Chapter Three. Welcome to Speculation Hour. This intermission episode. Who fucking cares? Oh my god. This is what you get when you're an idiot. So I think chapter three, like, one thing I've realized is the way Toriel's presented in this is if you played Undertale, you're probably like, man, Toriel's such a sweetheart. I want to smooch her. And I want, I, want, I want her to be my mom. And then this so far has been, man, would it suck to have Toriel as a mom. <laughs> so much of it is about how, 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 like, it makes sense. Like, Toriel is, is a caring, loving mother. She won't let you go. Like, you're going to be constrained, and the minute you try to resist, she'll make a big fuss about things. 
And I like that idea. And I think chapter three is going to be about that. It's going to be about Chris. And there's probably going to be a knife enemy. It's called Edge, whose entire sole purpose in life is to be like, man, Toriel sucks, doesn't she? <laughs> like, man. Oh, wow, that, that conversation didn't skip. I like how it's like, please, of anything, remember this. The door's locked. Gosh darn it. But yeah, I think Tarot is going to be about that. Like, Toriel as a mother figure. Like, what's she really like? Because people... People don't... Don't get that... Oh, it's my locker. It's empty. That, who has it now? Why does this place have lockers when it's just a small town? I don't get that. But yeah, I, I think it's going to be about that. About Toriel, the mother, and why it wouldn't be that neat or good to have. About the emotional experience of... of because Chris clearly is a troublemaker, right? Like, he goes around the place, he makes, makes a whole bunch of fusses, and he does all kinds of goofy stuff. Jockington is an actual class person. What, what the fuck? What's the deal? But yeah. It's going to be about that. It's going to be... It's going to be neat. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Why does she have flowers? Oh. It's a bunch of roses. Oh my god, it's... It's, it's Asgore. Yeah, they mentioned that. I got a lot of characters to talk. It's a whole mother... Um... I haven't called... So... I also forgot about the library. <laughs> Builds character. Uh... Builds character, honey. The library, library. Gosh, that's a mouthful. And I got a whole bunch of characters to talk to. That's so cute. Like, if you're soft, if you're very soft. Oh my God, it's Temmy and the cool leg, man, Temmy. I believe in you. I believe in you, Temmy. Why is he looking at the camera, dude? Oh God, I didn't see this before. Oh my God! Oh, it's because he he rent. I think my brother loaned out the book, like uh. Is real. The whole point's just that. <laughs> the books. Why? That, that guy is uh, one of the gastric dudes, right? Just making sure that the conversation options, all the check boxes are checked off. You know, you gotta, gotta, gotta be sure about that. Let's go visit Noel. I didn't notice this. Um, I'm a big old idiot. Okay, no, it's a conversation. Oh, she says the same thing no matter what. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, uh, it's important that I get everything. Um, so a thing I didn't notice originally that's kind of interesting, Noelle's house is where she's standing in front of. She's standing in front of the gate to her house because her mother's the mayor and thus she owns the big house. Because that's how these stories always work. So, I'm going to tell you a fun little story. Uh, one of the mayors in, in my local place of residence put up a statue of his pregnant wife. And they have to increase the elevation of the statue at a certain point because people are vandalizing it. Because no one fucking cares about your wife, dude, and putting a statue of her is not very classy. So, Des. I, I read up on this because I actually didn't get this on Chapter 2, and I might have gotten it later. Des is uh, believed to be December? There's a whole thing in Chapter 2 about December. Uh, sister, imply to be gone, or dead, or something. Interesting. If you want to see all this, I have another video. This is an intermission, my, 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 my good sir. Why does he buy roses for people? What is it to do? Also, I forgot this, they are actually open. Oh, it's great. It's great. Naps a look. You fucking nerd! Another detail that I didn't notice originally. Be quiet. We're gonna listen. Apparently, that is a similar sound effect to what happens with the phone we try to call in the dark world. It is a gaster sound effect. I am 
I recently saw a video from a guy called Plague of Gripes. He made a pretty picture of Noel flying out of the thing in the chapter two. And I think he griped about is that this game relies heavily on Undertale knowledge, and I think to some extent he's kind of right because if they're going to do a Toriel personality analysis in chapter three about how you know motherhood of, that she has is not what you think it is, basically Toby's saying, "Please stop making fan art of her giving you kisses, you 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 child baby man." <laughs> I'm a AOE the baby man. Um, but, uh, what was I saying again? I, I kind of agree that if, if Gaster gets involved at all in a serious capacity, if Sans gets overworld knowledge, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I don't want that. I don't want this game to just... Like, I think it's cute to rehash all the art and the characters and the concepts and remix them a bit. That's cool. But the second you start drawing pal parallels that are like, okay, cool, I played this unrelated prequel and you're putting all this stuff in... Cool. So yeah, religion around here is the angel. I wonder if Toriel is actually a... Uh, a mo uh, same thing? No. I wonder if Toriel is like actually... Because here's the, th the thing, right? Um, it's. I, I kind of wonder if Toriel is religious because she has a human child and has to take care of them. And it's like, man, this is so hard taking care of this child that is so different from everything I know. And it gives me the heebie-jeebies to have to take care of this thing. Like, how did Toriel end up with a human child? I, I wonder that myself. Like, how the hell did that happen? I like how Chris's answer was that. <laughs> hum. So, one thing I really like is that the wiki has to be constantly aware of not giving characters names that they can't give them. Because they can't say that the brother is Papyrus, because he hasn't been named yet. We all know it's that, but they can't do it. So they don't. They just call him an unnamed, young, unnamed younger brother. They, they, I, People who maintain the wiki, for God's sake, you are blessed with an awful, awful job. <laughs> I do not envy you having to restrain yourself from using all the knowledge. And that's also why I kind of want this. That's also why I kind of want this. Um... Uh, Every man. I think that's one of the ammo gams from Undertale. It's icy over there, of course. Um, I, I really, really, really hope. And I, I'm, I'm going to trust Toby. The guy clearly knows what he's doing. Does he? Undertale was really harsh on the you gotta do everything just right, and I just recognize this is Groobies. Um, to an extent. But yeah, I'm, I'm... More roses. Jesus Christ, Dad. Stop giving everyone roses. It's not very classy. Um, am I supposed to have another? Oh, yeah, I got the letter properly. Um, but I really don't want this to become Undertale 2. Electric Boogaloo. That's not a fun twist, and it just ruins everything for me, if anything at all. I still love the pizza thing. It makes me giggle. And here, it's Burger Pants. That might be his name. He calls him Azzy. It's implied that this is a, actually a thing. Man, you are so depressing. Someone actually had a job for a while. It's not that bad. You just gotta stop giving a shit, man. Everyone's got to do something to make the world go around in their little part of the world, and if you're unable to handle that, well, that's not what's killing me right now. I mean, you look way better. I guess it doesn't match your hair. Like, the purple kind of clashes with the softer tones, but... I don't know, man. This mustard. Oh, it's him. It's him. Like, all the way down there, still talking to me. I don't know. Why am I doing this intermission for so long? I don't know. Doug.
Maybe he's calling me Douglas. But he's calling someone Douglas. That's not actually called Douglas. I don't know if it's true. Uh, if you are paying attention, please note if the heart is actually off-center to a specific option. It's implied that the left option is usually what Chris goes with, which we'll, we'll pay attention to that in Chapter 2 and see if that's any true at all. I don't think that we don't have like, an expanded dialogue tree, but to be fair, you're kind of a creep, dude. You're kind of a creep. Like, what even would a sleepover mean? You look like right around the corner. Dude. I got a bouquet. It's my dad's truck. All this work just so that I can enter chapter two just fine. So how long it's... Because I didn't notice that at first. When does Onion Sand thing appear? I mean, they're not called Onion Sand. They don't technically have a name. They're whatever, really. Like, they literally ask you for a name. Like, the thing I don't like about Undertale, when I really think about it, is it's way more obsessed with the RPG trappings that it's trying to escape. Let me put it like this. Undertale continuously hammers home the spare people thing. Have mercy. Don't kill people. You can make it through the video game without hurting anyone. Oh, oh, what about the, the prophecy of coming out here? Like, everything revolves around the central gameplay mechanic, which feels kind of like Toby doesn't trust his audience a lot. And it it, it felt too... It, it just... I kind of really like it when the story just does things. And that kind of plot crap, that's not fun lore or anything, just, just gets in the way of the fun shit, you know? I'm not having fun. Yeah, this is the, the 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 gate that leads to Noel's house. Talk about it. Yeah, I think it's just the center and it's off center. So yeah, I like the idea that while well, the player character is very talkative is this really what you're going to do all day you're just going to wait for your mom to show up cat flap Wait, I need to call Sansa's number and tell them I'm an idiot baby. Thank you. <laughs> I need to make sure that that happens. Uh, let's go get the story conversation out of the way. I, on one hand, I kind of hope that what I'm thinking is true. And this is all going to be like religious stuff and kind of background elements on Toriel's relationship with religion. What kind of mother she's like and how people feel about her and her motherhood. But... Okay, that's my subscription for Duolingo renewing. Oh man, it's going so fast. Copyright claims. A lot of copyright claims on the these videos, by the way. Our senses appearance in Delta. What the fuck are you talking? Opens connections to Undertale. Oh my god, it's a gamer rant. Okay, like I, my my phone recommends it. I don't really care about it, but sometimes I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I got uh, like a minute. Let's, let's take a fucking minute. Except, oh, does never remembers that for some reason. It's probably gonna be like, well, you know, uh, sands travel through time. I'm like, I don't want that to be the case at all. I, I hate that. You turn frisk dies. Strong amounts get the infant load of the animals can okay, yeah, we know that. Lutz can use the reset each menu and then Flowey gets access to that when he has all the souls in his control, blah 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 blah. So it looks like a very unspecific fashion. Oh my god. Like the thing is he's already shown up in chapter one. Why are they speculating about this now? Like, he's still the same guy, yes, but that's the point. Oh, I love how the whole article's point is 
It's possible the time can actually jump timelines, too. That's the machine. No, fuck you. That's not an article you wrote. That's just you going, I have exactly one theory, and I want you to listen to me. And we've had this already. Book of Hymns. Yeah, so knowing what's in this room, we're, we might get the knife, which again, edgy. I like the idea of Chris's personal interpretation of what Toriel's like, what is growing up a Toriel like. And again, as I mentioned, Chris is the kind of person where probably a lot of conflict started to arise over the years. At first, it was kind of alright being cute and all that. And then not. Where do the red horns go? Um, it being that Chris is like all cute at first, and it's all fine. Uh, Chris's room doesn't have a lot of ornamentation or decoration, which is also kind of interesting and weird when you think about it. Me. Oh, Chris, honey, you've grown up so much. Someday soon you... Get us a devil horns. It's great. How sweet. These are from him, are they not? <laughs> Later, I think it mentions a loud... I thought I... Yeah. Yeah, like all these little things. <sighs> the video game. Super Smashing Fighters. He loved the little green lizard. Oh, man. I've never been this far in the song. What the fuck? I like how everyone notices that Chris is being weird. Anyway. If you go through the door, a lot of times Troy's like, Listen, am I supposed to stall a revolving door? I just want to see the line because it makes me giggle. Chris, why do you keep leaving and coming back? Would you like me to install a revolving door? I love how she's trying to keep it. Like, what is it for Toriel? Like, she has the whole religious aspect. She clearly believes a lot because otherwise she wouldn't be at church every day for a week when she found out that Azriel gave a kissy kiss. Um, like, what does that do to her? Like, she cares that much about Azriel. What about Chris? Now, Chris is like the only one she could pour it all into. What's the age difference anyway? Chris is still going to what is clearly like an elementary, middle school, high school thing. Azriel's like university. That's like really, really high level stuff. Also, it's kind of interesting. The game... There are portions of the game where it's like you is used to refer to the player, which is goofy in this context. It's also kind of goofy that how long have they been divorced? It's also a question I'm interested about because it's implied that the two of them were old enough... were like, you know, able to eat at QC's diner back when Asgore was around. And yet, I guess Tori would have probably just thrown those pictures out of anything. So it makes sense, you know. Listen, I just want to hear my victory tune, all right? I need to appreciate victory. I love it. I, I don't know. There's something, there's something about this that just works better because it's far more about people. And again, Undertale is so laser fixated on the idea of, hey, what if video games didn't... What if Mario jumping on the Koopas was mean? And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But you can't repeat that statement until the end of the game and make that the only statement you're making. And all the, the, the bad guy endings were fucking flat when you think about it. The genocide run is very strict about it. it fair enough for Noel because, in Chapter 2 because that makes sense. It's kind of about that. But genocide isn't about that. Genocide is just about kicking ass and taking everyone's names. Being extremely persistent about that should not be a qualifier. Pacifist, the, the game doesn't give you room for experimentation, so you can lock yourself out of a pacifist run. It does let you skip the Photoshop flowey fight on a pacifist run if you've done it before. In fact, I think you skip it on neutral ones if you fuck them up once. So, which is why I uh, found a guide that said you can actually go to the pacifist run without bleeding Photoshop file. You have to fight him first and get the ending, and then you can go back to the safe and everything from there. And you can skip him on subsequent on subsequent runs. Somehow, its floral scent has increased. Ugh. Well, at least I got hot chocolate. It's going to be cold chocolate next time, ain't it? There are many books. So many books, man. I also think it's kind of neat that the heart can only be controlled. For, uh, while it's in a cage and everything. It's just a goofy detail. Also, this... Kind of interesting. You have to mirror... The, 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 it's just one of those details you forget about with mirrors, man. Uh, 
So someone commented that there's a, a shirt with a tear in it, and for some reason the, the wiki doesn't mention it's specifically a cross country shirt. Beautiful day outside. So here's a problem that I have. Here's a problem that I have. So I have a problem. I need to make sure my record. Listen, doesn't matter. Point is, the cage implies that he has this. Again, room is extremely barren. Even the fucking lamp looks like it's been crapped over ten times. Closed door. What I don't get is this thing implies that the soul has been around for a while. But we as a player are a discrete entity partaking in the story. Who control... Like, do... Is that just a random metasphere of people who control Chris over the years? Why now? Is it a thing that he knew about? Is it something you feel when you have a soul? Are there other humans with similar problems? Like, the funny thing is both Undertale and Deltarune share one interesting plot element, which is that there's only one human. And that's Frisk or Chris. I mean, it's probably because human characters are harder to design because, you know, humans have expectations and everything. And honestly, just a nice part of the song. Um, yeah, I, I. Hey, anyway, let's go to, to the video games, everyone. Why did I do this again? Dude, who knows? Yeah, I think it's just offset. That's just the offset of the neutral option, and it's nothing to do with what Chris feels. Well, see you in the next one.